On March 24, 25, 2022, the Rouen Health Sciences School and the Rouen University Hospital hosted the second national symposium on precision medicine entitled Pathways to Precision Medicine. Supported by Rouen Normandy Health Campus, this event brought together international experts in various fields of precision medicine who came from 11 different countries. Commonly known as the 4P medicine, precision medicine is based on four main pillars and aims to be predictive, preventive, personalized, and more importantly, participatory. This new approach highlights the individual compared to the conventional approach in which disease prevention and treatment strategies are based on an average fictional person as a proxy of the general population. This concept takes into account individual variation of each patient, be it clinical, biological, environmental, or social. It aims to translate the gathered data into tailored disease prevention or management actions. The major challenge of the coming years is to train a workforce with hybrid skills that masters the art of medicine, but also understands the power and limitations of the overwhelming data-driven technologies. Je m'appelle Harald Schmidt, je suis un docteur médical et une pharmaciste, mais c'est le maximum de français. <laughs> I work at Maastricht University and I have moved now from classical research to precision medicine in the past years. Well, the precision medicine in the moment is the answer to the imprecision medicine that we currently have. So we basically do not understand most of the diseases. Therefore, we have to wait until symptoms arise. We name the disease after a symptom and then we treat the symptoms. But because that does not cure the problem, the diseases become chronic. So we have lots of chronic diseases, but they are chronic because we didn't know the cause. It's like if you would bring your car to a mechanic and the mechanic would say you have to every three months bring your car again because it's chronically defect. You wouldn't accept this, but in medicine we still do. Yeah, it's not something where we talk about the future in 10 or 20 years. There are a lot of things uh, patients or not yet patients can already do. You can, um, for instance, get your genome sequenced. Then you will benefit from every new knowledge that is generated in the next years. You can use symptom checkers so that you don't rely only on your medical doctor about a diagnosis. You can go pre-diagnose there. And of course, you can do prevention, lifestyle prevention is in 80% of the causes of a chronic disease. So that's the, almost the best thing. Yeah, this is, medicine is already quite interdisciplinary, but precision medicine even more, because we're now working with mathematicians, with computer programmers in the lab. I never had that in my group before. Now I have mathematicians in my lab. And uh, a meeting like this one, where you bring all these disciplines together, is almost for me like a homecoming meeting. Normal medical meetings are still based in organs, and I'm always the disruptive guy in these meetings. Here I have the feeling it's basically a homecoming conference. The Pathways to Precision Medicine Symposium is a major scientific event that gathers international researchers, health professionals, and thought leaders from different avenues of the healthcare ecosystem to discuss, share, collaborate, and develop actionable ways to maintain wellness and improve human health. The aim of this event is to raise awareness in the medical and scientific community, along with institutional officials, about the opportunities and challenges of tomorrow's medicine which aspires to be integrative, predictive, and precise by embracing new data-driven technologies. So uh, I'm Shrek uh, Zhang, uh, assistant professor at the Harvard Med School and uh, associate bioengineer at the Brigham Young Hospital. 
Uh, our lab has been really working uh, on biofabrication perspectives, primarily uh, bioprinting and uh, organ chip devices to allow uh, fabrication of human tissues and organs for different applications. Yeah, biofabrication basically means uh, the uh, use of cells and uh, possibly associated biomaterials to allow generation of functional tissues uh, and uh, organ type uh, 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 systems to allow uh, emulation of the human counterparts for, uh, for their functions and uh, downstream applications. Yeah, so uh, uh, as mentioned, I mean, biofabrication can be potentially applied to different aspects. Uh, so one thing is uh, 3D uh, uh, fabrication of these human tissues and organs, and uh, uh, if you uh, uh, then uh, apply those uh, towards, for example, uh, uh, let's say different donor patient derived uh, geometries of the tissues or cell types uh, in there, then you can start to really personalize this medicine according to different patient needs. So that's uh, one aspect, but also another aspect to mention this, uh, uh, this organ chip device is basically in virtual models of human tissues and organs, where you can also imagine you can uh, uh, combine them with cells that are coming from different patients, different donors, different uh, uh, people, uh, populations, and then uh, allow them to really uh, 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 promote our capacity to screen drugs in a better way. Uh, so those are perspectives I think might be relevant to precision medicine with biofabrication. The clinical implementation of precision medicine requires a profound change in medical practice. Future healthcare professionals will be required to deploy a large-scale set to properly engage with the intimidating data-rich medical ecosystem. Communication and leadership skills as well as emotional intelligence will be more important than ever as AI-based systems will not be able to take into account all patients' physical and emotional states. Tomorrow's practitioners will not be replaced by AI, but those who don't master AI will certainly be less competitive. Uh, I'm Nele Brusselaars, I'm a clinical epidemiologist, I'm a medical doctor by training, and I'm a researcher uh, doing lots of research in the microbiome field and also on long-term effects of commonly prescribed drugs. Well, I think nowadays in medicine we have made huge advancements already and we can treat the large majority of diseases, but there are still many diseases that we don't have an answer for, uh, that we can't treat many chronic diseases uh, that we just keep treating with, uh, with drugs. And for me, precision medicine may be a solution to also treat those people to get them back in a more healthy state, uh, which can be, of course, benef be beneficial for a very long time and for many, many people, although we can do a lot in medicine already. Uh, there are really things which are implemented, but for those it's often without a solid basis of knowledge. Uh, for example, probiotics, prebiotics, it's a uh, hype, it's a big market already, but there is not enough research to really show that it works. So I think we need to have a more solid research first uh, and it's not only the probiotics we also need to restore our microbiome uh, ourselves uh, for example by limiting our prescribed drug use uh, living healthier if those factors are not in place i don't think any uh, you know supplement will do the trick uh, so we do need um, yeah, to understand everything better before we can really implement it but it has a very big potential in women's health uh, like for example to prevent preterm birth also in cancer treatment will cancer treatment work or not uh, so those are th or in chronic diseases obesity metabolic diseases so there is a big potential and uh, so I do see that uh, I do foresee that there will be microbiome treatments in the near future. Some of them are already there, but then uh, it can, it's a very fast evolving field. I 
think it's already wonderful that there are so many clinicians uh, and also students in, uh, who will become active clinicians in the future are participating in events like this because they are the next generation. They will be treating uh, us and our family members in not such a distant future. And now they already know what's going on and they were, will be the ones who need to convince their patients and the public as well to live healthier, to use treatments uh, and hopefully yeah, I always hope that uh, clinicians do have a solid research training as well, because that's also something I see in, in research that is often still um, a bit of a translation problem between the basic researchers and the clinicians. They, do, they are, yeah, both groups are excellent in what they do in daily life, but they do often have some communication problems. So it's very good that uh, events like this hopefully fill that gap and make it easier to communicate, so to reach the research to a higher level. This symposium was a great opportunity to foster collaboration and raise the awareness about the challenges of tomorrow's medicine. The sole goal that drives the organizers is making biomedical data speak in a secure, clinically relevant and ethically accountable way to improve human health.